this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to try and use a Singer monogrammer on a Singer slant needle sewing machine. In this case, uh, Regina, my Singer model 403A. This is the uh, original Singer monogrammer that that I bought with the machine. It came with the machine when I bought it used and I know that Singer has made after this they made a deluxe monogrammer that uh, I've never had but I'll show you a picture of it here real quick and then I'll just show you uh, the, the parts of, of this first what comes what came in the box um, this is part number 171258 I think that's actually the whole kit here the everything that that came with it um, let's go ahead and set up here and we'll take a look at what comes inside uh, first, we have a manual, and I've looked through this. It's a pretty decent manual, and inside the manual came um, a placement guide uh, with with all the initials that are included, the full alphabet A through Z, and the idea is you line up the letter on the fabric where you're going to sew. And someplace on each letter, letter is a little, a little hole in it that you can use to mark with a pencil or whatever um, your starting place. And it's just called a template, initial placement guide. So that that was included. And from what I can tell from seeing in the manual, uh, this this is a pretty full kit and uh, as I said the, the guide is uh, pretty extensive talking about it uh, all the parts how to set it up how to use it a couple different ways to uh, line up the uh, fabric and everything they discuss the different feed covers for it and uh, We'll get into that. And then let me move this styrofoam. And we'll see. Here's what the kit looks like inside. It came with its own little uh, lint brush. And I'm not sure what this part is for. It's almost like a little comb. And I'm not sure what that is for. Uh, and a brush. And then it, it has the monogrammer unit itself looks a lot like a buttonholer doesn't it <laughs> looks a lot like the singer buttonholer and then it came with one of the three feed cover plates that uh, are described if I can get it out here that are described in the manual Come on, you. And uh, this is the one that says it is for slant needle uh, machines. And then it had uh, an attachment screw that's uh, heavier. It's it's uh, it's really kind of like a clamping screw. The the way it's made, it's different than the. A presser foot attaching screw and uh, this works a lot better than this would and then it has um, a little decal up here with all the letters of the alphabet and they're lined up A to Z um, you know in order and then these are the little guides or templates um, on the top side, they do have the 
um, a raised letter so you know what letter this is for R. And it also has an alignment line, uh, which I'll get into later. And then the bottom side is the plane. Okay. And while I've got this up closer, uh, I want to show you that on this uh, hole in the middle, there's one flat side. And that's how you use, uh, that's what you line up with the flat side of the pin where we put this in the, in the device. So just to show you all those uh, parts. And then let's take a look at the actual monogrammer here. As I said, it looks a lot like the uh, professional buttonholer <laughs> um, that, that Singer made their three, three or four different versions of uh, buttonholers. And, of course, right here there's a cover and... It's funny, when they name all the parts in the manual, they don't, in the picture, they don't show this or name it. So I'm just going to call it the, the, I guess, latch knob. But that's what's used to open the cover. Okay. And then inside the cover, you have uh, the disc cover lock right here, which is just, when you turn that knob, you know, the little lever... Uh, move, moves up and latches under the front part of the cover there. It's very, very, very simple. It's very similar to the button holders. Um, the whole thing is called the disc cover, this lid. Um, the part here, now you see the inside is somewhat similar to the button holders I've done but it's different and this is a disc latch this is what you would put the disc here and then this latches it into place and there is a little um, there's a slot here with a little point on on it pointing back towards the disc and away from the disc right here there's two little uh, points and that's to line up uh, when you line it up before you start uh, sewing, that's what that alignment line I was telling you about right here. Okay. And then uh, the, as, as we'll uh, go on, this is called the disc positioner. It's like when the button holder template, when you wanted to move it into a certain place, you use this to ratchet and spin that um, pattern disc until it gets into the starting point. And of course we have the fork arm that, that slides over the, the thumb screw on the uh, needle holder and when that needle is going up and down the ratcheting system is what turns the disc and uh, through the pattern then there is an attaching bracket right here and that's how you attach it to the presser bar and then, of course, the hole, and that's where that attaching screw or clamping screw goes. Um, on the bottom side here, you just have your foot, and it's got these, like the button holder has these little uh, raised knobs on it, and that's what's going to move the fabric around to position it properly under the needle point to make your letter and the bottom does look similar you know it's, it's a plate and this of course this has to be able to to move right so there's a rivet here that lets it uh, slide back and forth and move accordingly 
uh, just a little hinge on the back for the lid and then there's uh, a stitch density this is how you set how close the stitches are uh, of course in a monogram you're going to want to use a, a, you know it's like a satin stitch and this locks your setting in place so the idea is that you you turn it counterclockwise to unlock it and then you can slide this around for the density that you hope to achieve. I found this kind of touchy. And then you lock it in place. Okay. I think that's gonna kind of cover all the all the parts here. Let me just put one of these, let me get that R disc back out and uh, I'll show you how to, to put this in. I'll be demonstrating it and trying to make an, an initial on the machine but when you, you lift up this uh, disc latch and these are I call them a pattern disc but they're called initial discs and if you remember I showed you the flat spot in the hole well on this uh, disc holder this little pin that sticks up here one side of it is flat too so that's the idea with with the initial and the lining mark uh, up you put the disc on there and you turn it and get it so the two flat sides are lined up and then you you push it all the way down and then you put this down but you see it's it it doesn't always want to go flat because it's got a follower pin that follows this um, pattern that's cut in here the big groove that's cut in here so what they say is when you when you put that in you have to gently press on it while you move the foot front to back and if necessary uh, side to side so by gently pushing on it and then I'll pull the foot now I I've pulled that see how that latch moves then I've pulled the latch or pushed it pulled it what there until it, that pin lines up now you can see it sits perfectly flat with the initial disc. Now in this case my line is right here and I want it to be lined up either with uh, on some of these initial discs it will line up with this point and on some of them it will line up with the lower point. So you, you do what they call toggle. And as you're doing this, now your foot's moving the fabric around. Okay. But you toggle that uh, until, whoops. Oh, see, I went, right, I went right past it. So let's just, that's good. While I'm moving around, you'll see that this, uh, foot moves around too when you're doing that so let's see if I can get this lined up now I'm gonna look right at it instead of through the camera okay then when you have this lined up with one of those points then you can close it and close the latching knob and then you would be set to uh, start sewing. Okay, so let's get this out here. Put that back, and I, and you'll see me kind of kind of doing this. Now, um, what I wanted to talk about was this feed plate. Okay, I I think I mentioned that um, it can come with one of three. And I, and I call this cover plate, they call it feed cover plate. 
and they have a uh, a model let me show you a picture here of feed cover 507661 Uh, and it says that feed cover replaces the throat plate of a touch and sew zigzag machine that have magnetic throat plates. Okay. And then this feed cover is 161825. And it says, replaces the throat plate of touch and sew and slant o matic zigzag sewing machines with elevator throat plates. Refer to your sewing machine for an information on how to attach and remove elevator throat plates. Now that's elevator throat plates are what are are this type like on my 403, 401, 500A, 503A Rocketeers that lets you uh, lift it up, uh, raise it above the feed dog, or keep going and let you elevate the plate all the way up so that you can slide it off and change it uh, to a straight stitch plate or take it off to clean inside there that's what they're talking about elevator plate okay then there's a feed cover eight six seven uh, four eight and that feed cover says it covers the zigzag throat plate of a vertical needle zigzag sewing machine and they give instructions on on how to use that so you according to that if you had the right feed cover on a vertical needle so we're not talking about a slant needle we're talking a vertical needle like 337 347 457 uh, 418 413 Mm, 348, 338, uh, those kind of regular mm, vertical needle machines, which I didn't know. I thought this could only be used on the slant machine. So, as I said, this is the plate that, that came with it, and it says it is for... Um, slant o -matic zigzag showing machines with elevator plates. So, this is the one that I tried. And I'll tell you right now, I couldn't make it work. I could not make this plate work properly. Um, let me set up here and I'll show you how you're supposed to put this on. Okay? okay so, you're going to want to take off your um, existing presser foot and the attachment screw for it um, because you're going to be replacing this with the monogrammer, right? So we'll take that off and then we want to take the throat plate off and replace it with this which said it's for the slantomatics that have this type of elevator plate. So I'm going to lower my uh, take up lever down which uh, it's easier if you take the needle out but I like to try and sneak it through but if you lower this down the idea is you want the feed dog to be lower then I'll lift this up all the way and then the idea is that it's going to slide off the back right okay and then I'm gonna put this on before I put it on I just wanted to show you maybe you notice these little punch outs here and it's like they're just bent down into the inside and I, and I think that's supposed to help balance it or something on and off is from
the back. So let me try that. Mm -hmm. Got to get my needle up off of it a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to pull my thread out here so I don't get it pinched according to them. I'll partially lower that and then I'll lower this all the way. Okay. Make sure that I've got it properly in there and then you would uh, slide the plate closed. Now this is the problem that I had was this still kind of rocks back and forth. Now I don't have a 401 or a 500A uh, in my possession right now, but I looked and they both take the same needle plate as this, so it seems like this would like fit uh, better. But I said, okay, well, you know, whatever, that's how it is. Um, and then I, I, I put the monogrammer on. I did everything exactly the way they said to do it. And it just kept, sh it just kept shredding and breaking my needle thread. And I, I used different sizes of needle and so forth. And I kept checking my alignment and... I verified that my needle is perfectly centered in the little hole in the straight stitch sewing plate. I followed the instructions in the service manual and verified that. It's, it's great. Uh, I have done some test sewing on this machine that I just finished uh, restoring and it sews fine. So I finally gave up on this. And uh, I, I took it off in frustration <laughs> after uh, a few hours of like fooling around with it. And like, man, I cannot, I cannot get this thing to go. So um, the more the more I looked at this, and the more I thought about it, and the more I looked at the picture of what they said was for the. Um, vertical needle and how you attach it you know it screws in over there on the side just like a button holder would be I thought well maybe I can use um, the feed cover plate for the button holder because with the machine I also got the pink Jetson uh, slant button holder that came with it so I said, okay, let's see if that's the same uh, cover plate. So I got this out, uh -huh. and, you, and you see how you see how similar <laughs> these these two guys are to each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The clamping, the plates, bottom sides, this is how wide, and this one is supposed to be how close the stitches are. This has the little round knob, you know, to, to uh, position the template. And that's got a little latch back here that opens the, the plate. If I can remember how to do it. There we go. And then it's got a little template that sits on a mounting post. You know, but it's the same, it's the same principle, right? Okay. So I dug around in here and I said, hey, here is the feed cover plate for the slant needle automatic button holder. Uh-huh. So I looked at it uh, compared to the picture in the manual, and it's not quite the same. It is uh, similar, right? Let's see if I can get that in the light. It's similar. But um, 
This comes up and, and curves a little bit, and this has more of a notch right here in it. Okay. But it's very similar. So I said, hey, what, what have I got to lose? Um, let me get all this buttonholer stuff out of the way here. And I thought, I'm just going to put that on and, and uh, try it. Okay. So, got to put my uh, plate, plate, uh, throat plate or needle plate back on here and get, whoop, and get that, um, see if I can get that a little bit lower. I've got the feed dog up at the limit of the uh, position according, adjusted, you know, according to the height in the manual. All right. Okay, so I got that. And then you mount this by screwing the mounting screw into the second hole back here. All right, so let me do that. I'll just finger tighten it for now. And this this works on the same principle as this that it it's supposed to sit up higher than the feed dog comes up. Right? So the feed dog won't touch the fabric. And the foot of the buttonholer, or in my case, the monogram, uh, works right on the plate here. So, get that uh, mounted. Let me screw that on. Now, what you want to do is look, is look right down through here to make sure that you are lining it up with that wide slot in the uh, multi-purpose or the zigzag uh, needle plate. You know, they got to be lined up properly, right? And then when you have it lined up, then you need to just tighten this in securely because the monogrammer is going to be sliding around on it. So I'm going to have to get up and look down in there to be sure I got it lined up, okay? I'm pretty comfortable now that I have this uh, two slots lined up good and I have this securely tightened in there. I don't want that to move because I could have a needle strike, right? Now I'm going to take my um, monogrammer here and uh, you mount it from the back, okay? And when you're putting it in, the little forked arm has to go over the thumb screw of the needle clamp, or the needle holder here, it has to slide over um, this part right here. That's where it works. Okay, And then this clamp, you have to position to, to, to kind of come on to the presser bar from the side. So you got to maneuver it around, and it's it's best to have the uh, presser bar lifted up. Okay, so I'm going to come behind here, and the first thing I'm going to do is try and line up the forked arm, which I got now, and then keeping that forked arm over, I've got to wiggle this uh, clamp to the side and then push it over to the right to get it uh, on in position and then I have to find my attachment screw <laughs> okay yep. okay sorry about that I, I had put it back in the box so see, I'm gonna hold with my right hand I'm gonna support the back end of that monogrammer and I'm gonna keep it pushed over against the presser bar and if you look at the right side of the presser 
bar you can kind of see the height of that hole in it and and line up this screw Whoop. and what I found was is that once you finally get the screw attachment screw I, I still call it the clamping screw but once you get it lined up and started which I'm still trying to do here there okay what I found is you have to you have to kind of wiggle the monogrammer around to get that uh, clamping part oh I think I pulled my screw out <laughs> to get that clamping bracket to fit nice and flush the first time I tried to use it I didn't really have it on completely I was the screw was tight but I didn't have it uh, lined up properly and and I started to 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 tr slowly try to sew the first time and it and I had problems let me just <laughs> put it that way so now I'm working from behind the camera you know so you you won't have this trouble there I've got the screw started in pretty good and then this is the part I mean about uh, wiggling it left to right and and up and down a little bit I just kind of keep jiggling it until it gets tighter and tighter and then I want to check uh, here that it's fit perfectly onto the end of the presser bar and then you can you can even go on the inside um, back back here and you can see the screw coming through and you can make sure that it's that little bracket is all the way around that was my problem before it wasn't wasn't seated perfectly and I got it finger tight and then I tightened it with the screwdriver which you're supposed to do you know it's a moving mechanical device right so I said yeah boy, I got this you know and and it's nice and it's nice and secure here it's not gonna go I said right okay I'm in great shape but I wasn't so I guess that's why I'm kind of harping on that okay once once you uh, get this mounted here the next thing that we're going to want to do is bring up the bobbin thread see how this is all kind of oops see this is all kind of still a little floppy and it's tight here and my monogrammer's tight this is a little you know when you lower it down it's going to clamp everything secure you know on top of your fabric but when you have it raised up if you hear this kind of you know between the foot and the feed cover that's what you're hearing so I want I want to hold on my thread and I want to bring up my bobbin thread here someplace I think I've been playing around with this so much here's my crazy long bobbin thread I don't need it that long ended up with about 10 inches of thread here so let me bring up my bobbin thread now through the feed cover plate and through my cloth clamping foot of the monogrammer mm -hmm. seems like somehow I still got that uh, Seems like somehow I still got that bobbin thread kind of pinched in there. Hmm. It wants to pull it off the bobbin and not pull up the end here. Hmm. See if I got it caught. I might have even got it caught in the. Oh, I did. I had it caught in the throat plate. All right, well, there's another little tip for you. Don't get your th bobbin thread caught in the throat plate. <laughs> okay, so 
Let's pull that up. You know, it doesn't raise up too far, does it? Hmm? Doesn't look like it's up, but I just want to pull that bobbin thread out from under the foot, just like I would a regular presser foot, and pull it out of the way. Right? Okay. But they they say to hang on to the needle thread up top, and I'll tell you why. So let me get um, some proper layers of fabric and stuff so that I can uh, try and make you a uh, monogrammed initial. Okay, I, I, I have a nice uh, test fabric here to sew on. And before I get started, I'm just going to, you know, do a reminder here that uh, I'm using this type of feed cover plate from a button holder. <laughs> um, and uh, this should be very tight. Uh, I've lined up the opening in it with the opening in my needle plate and uh, verified that and just have it very tight. And when I mounted the monogrammer, I put the forked arm over the uh, thumb screw hub. of um, the needle clamp and then I uh, put in the clamping screw and jostled it around a little bit because I want to be very sure that that wrap around uh, bracket is really uh, situated perfectly on the end of the presser bar there. Okay, then I have my uh, initial disc for the letter O and uh, I've you got the bracket down to hold it so it's flat it has this uh, bracket has to lay flat and then I'm just going to use the little lever and line up the mark on that initial disc with the little silver point to be sure I've got that proper. Now I can close and lock the monogrammer. Okay. And then um, on my needle positioning I've got it in the center position. If you're using a machine that has left, center, uh, right for the for the needle or needle bar, be sure you're in the center. And they suggest a stitch width of uh, two and a half, and then you can go up, up more if you want. And mine is just barely over two and a half. And your stitch uh, length does not matter because that is controlled by the stitch density switch right here. That you unlock and move this back and lock it. And when I did that on mine, and they talk about that, that if your uh, fabric doesn't move, then unlock it and just nudge it a little tiny bit forward and then lock it again. So I fooled around uh, testing it and I think I, I it's not all the way back. It's just a barely nudged forward. I could feel a little like click when I moved it off the back to go forward. As soon as it 
moved and I heard that little snick, I stopped and tightened it. And that's a pretty good setting for this one. So, uh, what, they, what they talk about here now is that you, and of course it's up to you, I'm sure somebody who's very familiar with doesn't need to do this anymore, but they say to take your uh, initial placement guide template and determine where you are going to want your monogrammed initial on your project and put that template down and you see it has or can you see that hmm yeah there you see that black line grids and and help you center in the area that's the same as, as I'll show you on the foot up there so you figure out where you're going to put this and of course you want to line line it up with the you know, edge of the fabric or the weave of the fabric and then they say you can put a mark through that little hole and so that is going to be your starting point okay then of course I have my presser bar lifted up right and I'm going to I have my bobbin thread back as normal they talk about holding the needle thread and guiding it under the satin stitch when you start to kind of seal off that thread and I, I don't really sew I'm not a, a sewist so um, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm sure a competent person would do that. But the idea is the first, uh, you know, five or eight stitches will cover that uh, needle thread. So when you trim it off, it's, it doesn't have a tail sticking out. Now on the foot, there's some white lines. There's two center lines and there's two lines here just like on the grid so you would want to line up your fabric the same way you did with your template I mean you don't want it turned or anything right you want it lined up and you, they say to start the needle into the fabric on your mark so I'll just get a little bit of that in say down to the eye of the needle and then I'm going to make sure that my fabric is is lined up here and then you're going to drop or lower the presser bar and the monogrammer and now you you need sufficient pressure presser bar pressure just like you would for sewing anything you know okay so I have my about two and a half wide and I've got everything set. I'm lowered. Now, as this uh, follows the disc, it's going to make the letter O with a little tail inside. And then I will see everything stops moving. And at that point, you want to stop sewing. You don't want to just keep sewing at the end there and punch a hole through the fabric or get a big glob of... Uh, the the thread there I'm trying to see how I want I want you to be able to get a pretty good look at that yeah that's distracting I guess I'll just go with that so I think I'm good let's give it a go How many of you? Oh, I'm gonna get the. How many of you spotted the problem there? <laughs> mm -hmm. And no, I'm not using invisible thread. As it started to turn the corner, look. That's what happened to my needle thread. Now I was getting that every single time, using the template 
that they said I should be using on a slant needle machine. Mm -hmm. And when I was practicing, I did get this a couple of times. And I what I have to check is that I believe the slot of the feed cover is not lined up properly with the slot in my needle plate. So I'm going to loosen this and I'm going to go get my reading glasses this time and get down in there and see if I don't have that. So it's probably the needle scraping on the side of the opening I think is what's happening. But actually I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that happened in a way because this is what happened every single time on, on the uh, plate that they recommended. And I, I couldn't do anything, no, no adjustment or anything. And I've got a new number 11 straight needle and everything. So I think it is my placement of this. Okay, so uh, with my glasses on this time, <laughs> I, I think I have a, a better alignment of this feed cover. I think as I was uh, tightening it before, it shifted a little towards me and I believe that the needle was scraping on the uh, opening of it and that's what shredded my thread so I, I realigned that and I've tightened it back up now and of course I, ha I had to jog the little lever to, to rotate my initial disc back to that line uh, being at the silver point, the starting point, and then I've lowered the needle uh, into the thread on my mark that I made, and I've dropped the monogram. So we're, we're right back where we started, and I think I'll go a little bit slower this time, and we'll see how it does. Now, I stopped here because I, I, I want a reminder. I've completed the circle of the O, and now it's going to come up into it a little bit with a little tiny tail that designates it's an O and not a Q with the tail inside. And it gets to a certain point, and the fabric stops moving. And they tell you you need to stop sewing right then don't keep sewing or you, you end up with a, a glob there so I'm just about to come up and make that little inside tail and I didn't stop it as soon as I wanted to but not too bad and I guess I could pull out the last couple of stitches but let's take a look at least I have it proper now and it didn't uh, shred the thread so I'm going to lift up the presser bar and monogram just like I would on any medium I was sewing and I'm going to pull out my work and I'll trim the threads over there and we'll take a look at it All right oh. so Not too bad. Now what they say is to pull these threads to the back and cut them off. <laughs> like, like I know how to do that. Right? So I'm just going to s snip them off here to get them out of the way. And we can get a little bit better look at it. I think I have the the th the thread density pretty good. It's 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 like a satin stitch. Now for this, 
I set my uh, needle thread tension unit like to zero. Uh, which normally I adjust these when I rehab the machine so that statin, satin stitching would be between one and zero. Because you have a very dense close satin stitch and you want very little resistance on the needle thread for that kind of stitching. Uh, let's take a look at the back now. I, I can I can trim my bobbin thread tails off and and uh, that's great. I'm, I'm happy with this. You know, for somebody like me, wow, I made a decent monogrammed initial O, except I'm, I'm hoping you can see how my, my tail that drops in here, it's a little bit globby, like a couple of extra stitches. I didn't stop it soon enough. I didn't recognize when it had finished and the fabric stopped moving. I was watching the needle and not the fabric, and then... I was like, oh, so I think I would go even slower once I get to that point. And the other thing that I have uh, learned is to really don't try and, and like guide or help the fabric at all. Because this, this foot with the special little bumps on the bottom is in full control of moving the fabric and look it's only like um, what is that about a five eighths of an inch um, or or so no maybe even a three eighths or half inch so it's not moving that much you know you don't have to help it and I think that can also bend your needle and cause a problem Ta-da. So, um, they talked about if you wanted to, you could double sew this, like go over it twice, especially if you didn't have your uh, width as close as I do. I fooled around and I, I wanted it. But let's, let's go ahead and do a double because I think it also then makes kind of a raised monogram which can which can look better so I'm gonna do this one more time before you before I quit sewing here whoops and I'm just gonna get this uh, temporary up there well let me get my bobbin thread out of the way and I'm gonna pull my needle thread up above the foot and I, th I think I mentioned you're supposed to guide that thread under the needle um, to, to kind of finish that starting thread so I've got that up let me just get my fabric in here I'll just pick a spot this time I'm not gonna mark it or anything but I have to open this back up, the lid, and I've got to get up and look down and, and do what they call jog that disc into the starting point again. Then I'll lock the lid. I'll lower my needle into my pretend mark. I will make sure my fabric is lined up properly and I'll drop it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to sew it again and then show you how to do the double coverage. Eee. Try anyway. Now, you, you see how it's moving the fabric all by itself. Mm. 
Now I'm I'm almost tempted to to do this <laughs> to do this tail by by hand, but let me just uh, I'm gonna stop right there. Hey, especially because I'm gonna attempt to do this uh, sew it double. You know, go over the first one with a second sewing and see how that looks compared. Okay, I had to brush up on this procedure in the manual. So what they say to do here, if you and they call it double stitching an initial. And they do recommend a size 11 and a fine thread uh, when you're going to do double. A size 11 needle, but you, you can use up to a 14 and a, a regular 50 weight cotton if you want. But what they say is you, you have the needle up out of the fabric, but you leave the foot um, down. Okay, and then you're going to open the cover again. <laughs> and uh, with your finger resting on that uh, silver bar up Let's see if I can with the finger resting on that silver bar so your disc doesn't come loose you're going to jog it again to line up the starting line with the silver point so you're back in the beginning okay lock that and then they say to pull out um, some of this thread between the fabric and the needle they say to to pull that out and of course i've got tension on the i've got tension on the thread now so even at zero i have to be careful but they recommend pulling out a length of thread because they they talk about pulling these lengths to the back when you're done sewing so you, you have to have s something here to pull back right okay so I've got that and never did I raise this up now I'm just going to go ahead and lower it, which should put it right back in my starting position. And I'm going to double stitch. Okay, I'm getting, getting close to that end there. There. Da, da, da. Okay. Now I'm just going to cut that length I pulled out. I wonder if I was supposed to cut that length before I started sewing because it looks like it made a little cross stitch there. Okay, lift that up. Let's pull this out. Trim it off. Let's go ahead and trim all my tails because I. As I said, I wouldn't know how to pull them to the back anyway. Hmm. I'm going to leave that one to show you that little cross stitch it made. Then I'll take off my two little bobbin thread tails. There. Oops, I didn't do too good of a job trimming that one. See if I can get that down closer to the. These are really jewelry making scissors. So there you can see the single stitched initial, and this is what they call the double. So it's kind of like on a printer, regular and bold. I, I kind of like it. It stands out, and this is a pretty smooth fabric. But if you were using, um, you know, kind of a rougher looking fabric or denim, or um, 
mm, leather. I think this bold one would look pretty cool. But you see how there's a, a cross? There's like a, a stitch through the middle here. Oh, I think I can pull it out. Yeah. I think that that is from that loop I pulled out. Remember I said that they say to pull a length of thread before you start the second uh, stitch? I think I should have pulled it out and then cut it. And by leaving a loop, somehow it got under the needle. There. And see, I, I ended the tail a little bit better this time than a big glob at the end. So this is about the fourth or fifth one I've made, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing a better job of it. So I hope my fumbling around has not uh, discouraged you from, from using your monogrammer if you have one or if you're interested in buying one. You know, I don't sew. I'm a mechanic, <laughs> right? But you could see I made a couple of decent looking, in my opinion, uh, monogrammed initials here. And uh, I think for those of you who, who regularly sew, you won't have the problems I did. And, um, you know, you probably have a little bit better finished um, than, than, than mine. Hey, I think they're pretty good. And every time I've handled the, the device and stuff and mounted it, I'm getting more and more used to it, you know, which is also um, very encouraging. So, um, I think that is about the, the, see, the parts, how to mount, uh, which plate I had to use. Uh, on the box that it comes in, it says for use with the 750 series machines and maybe that cover plate that they include would work perfect with those I mean most of Singer's engineering is phenomenal so um, I just know for me I had I couldn't use it and this was a better but um, I just had a thought, if you want to hang in, if you're not bored with this already, I'm wondering if I even need this cover plate. The whole idea of this is to cover the feed dog. And, and I have what's called a throat plate elevating machine here, a 403. And I'm uh, wondering if I couldn't just not use the plate elevate the throat plate up into the up position to raise it above the feed dog and I'm wondering if it would work so if you care to uh, hang in here while I try that if, if you don't care then thanks for watching as much as you did and I hope you'll come back again but let's just pull this out and swing it off to the side there I'll get my uh, bobbin thread to the back. I'll pull my needle thread up here. Now I'm just going to uh, put this in the up position like that and hopefully maybe you can you can you can see that it's raised that needle plate up a little bit. See, I can get the tip of my screwdriver under there now. Okay, so, so look, I'll put it down, I'll put it up there. Now, not to the unlock, but just to the up. All right, so we'll try a third uh, attempt here. I'll get this under there and just kind of pick a spot. But 
um, remember now, I, I have to do the whole jogging thing. I've never done this much jogging in several years. I have to pull that little lever towards me and position the initial disc into the starting point. Okay. I relock it. Um, start my needle into the fabric on the mark that I should have made. Get it down in there a little bit. Make sure my fabric is, uh, you know, line, lined up to where I want the initial to be. And then I'm going to drop my uh, plate, hold on to the needle thread lightly, and I'll see if just sewing on a raised needle plate will work. like it did. Lift that up. It looks like it did. We'll take a closer look here, but man, if I didn't have to use a cover plate, that would make this go a lot quicker and a lot easier. Okay, so there is my, there's all three of them, and this is the one where I didn't use the cover plate at all, this one on the bottom. Hmm. I kind of, I kind of like this, that'll give you a, a pretty good idea too of this double stitched one. See, there's the single stitched using the cover plate. The double stitched, which just, it definitely uh, raises it up uh, a lot more. You know, it's double stitched. It's like when you do a buttonhole like that. That's kind of impressive. I like it. You can it's bolder to look at and you feel that it's raised and then here's the single stitched with no cover plate just raising the um, just raising up the needle plate how about that man that's nice to know okay so, if you care to, in the comments, you can let me know what you think about all that. And, uh, now, let's see, there's a couple more things. I was going to open this up and, and show you, um, I'm going to go ahead and take out the initial disc. Just by lifting that up and rocking it a little and getting it out, you know. I... I was going to open this up and show you all the oil points where in the manual it, uh, that came with it, it shows you um, all the places that they recommend oiling. And when I opened this up, there were there was some dried oil in a few places, but it was awfully dry. So I, I kind of just cleaned it up with uh, Q-tips and alcohol because uh, it wasn't it wasn't very bad, you know. And uh, put the oil on it, and then I put it on the machine and just ran it without thread, and then took it back off the machine and wiped up any excess oil. I oiled it pretty pretty heavy, <laughs> but if you want to open it up to oil it. There is a cover screw right there behind the ripe, uh, wrap around clamp. Right there is a little, a little uh, pan head screw. And you just take that screw out and you open this up. And then you can, you can uh, kind of 
how did I do that? I think I lifted it up just a little and and pushed it off the back here. Then this whole plastic cover came off and all the all the parts and everything are exposed up in here and all the places that that I would need to oil or you would need to oil. But what I've decided to do instead is I figure look if you bought one of these or you have one the chances are pretty good you have this instruction manual so I was just going to look for a place online to get a free manual um, you know and give you a link to that down below the video say hey just go here and you can download this free manual and I couldn't find I could not find a link to get this manual so I scanned it in using my flatbed scanner and I recreated the manual as a PDF a portament, portable document file document and I made a new email address and if you would care to have a PDF copy of this and it's in color uh, of the manual and I took I also scanned uh, where is it I, I scanned the uh, the placement guide and if you would if you care to have that if you'll email me at this email address I'm going to give you and just ask me just say I'd like the I'd like the monogrammer uh, manual and what I'm going to do is reply to your email and attach the document. And once my email program says it's been sent, I'm going to delete your email and my reply. I, I don't need your email address after that. I don't want it. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to give it to somebody else or anything like that. It's just uh, an idea I had to give people who need the manual a free copy of it. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to verbally tell you that um, email address, and and I'll put a link to it below the video. But I I know especially if you're on um, cell phones and tablets and stuff, you you can't always see the description below the video so it's Andy's no Andy manuals a n d y manuals m a n u a l s manuals so Andy is singular manuals is plural with the s Andy manuals instead of Andy too get it <laughs> Andy manuals at gmail.com and um, I've got that set up in my program I did a test and it should be working so um, if you'd like the manual which does include the section about how to open up the cover and and uh, and where to uh, Lubricate. It's got a couple pages here, and telling you how to remove it and show, showing you a nice little diagram with little arrows every place to put. It's like oil. there's 16 places to put oil. Whew. So you want to be sure if you have one of these, you open it up, make sure it's clean, brush any dust out, wipe off any old oil that you can, get some new in there. Uh, run it without thread to make sure it's warmed up and good and then open it back up and wipe off any excess oil and you'll be good. You'll have your manual. You'll have a picture of the temp template to see where the little hole is in here. So where you you begin like on the O oh, it was up here close to the tail. And then it went right down here and back up and curled the tail. On the P, it's here. On the G, it's down here on the bottom. You know. So even you could don't have a clear template, you maybe could still use this to help 
guide you in, in where to place your needle to start. That is the original Singer Monogrammer uh, hooked up and used on a slant needle Singer Model 403A. Whoa! Thanks so much for watching that, especially if you made it this far. And uh, I hope you'll come back for the final slideshow of Regina. I think I'm going to title it Regina, Made to Love. So you don't want to miss that. Take care now.